chapter number 10. The book of 1 Corinthians 10. We're going to take just a few minutes. We'll not be long this evening. And um, I, the first part of 1 uh, Corinthians 10 here deals with the Old Testament stories uh, and how that they are an example for us. All those, most of those Old Testament stories are written for our examples that we shouldn't make the same mistakes that those people made back in those days. So as you read your Old Testament, you say, boy, they messed up there. Man, they messed up there. That's the Holy Spirit instructing you not to mess up and do the same crazy thing that they did during those times. Full of stuff like that. Absolutely full of stuff. And this is one of them. This recounts one of those times during the, the, the Old Testament when the children of Israel were not right with God and look what happened. Chapter 10, verse number one. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. That's good advice right there, isn't it? Amen. Do you know the Lord don't want you to be ignorant? Did you know some people think the more ignorant you are, the more spiritual you are automatic? That's not true. That's not true. Uh, now, you can be ignorant and be right with God. And the Lord, it's not a sin to be ignorant, but it is a sin to stay ignorant. Right? One old guy got up and he said, I just keep getting ignoranter and ignoranter. That ain't nothing to brag about, y'all. <laughs> that's nothing, that's nothing, nothing to be proud of. Being here. You should learn something. You should advance. You should know more Bible and doctrine and truth and righteousness and judgment than you did uh, even a year ago or six months ago. I would not you be ignorant, brethren, how that all our fathers, these were the Jews in the wilderness, were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, the Red Sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So you see how that coming out of Egypt was a picture of getting saved, going through the Red Sea is a picture of baptism. You can see that all the way through. And then verse number three, and did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink. They ate manna, they drank water, and it said they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Now, spiritual food, spiritual food, spiritual drink. The manna in the wilderness represented the word of God, and the, the rock that they hit and the water represented faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the same thing we do now. We eat the manna, the word of God, we drink the, the water, faith in what the Lord has done for us. Verse five, but with many of them, according to this verse this morning, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. God's teaching an example here. Verse seven, Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. Uh, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day, three and 20,000. That was that great plague they had there. Neither let us tempt Christ, as, <laughs> excuse me, some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither let murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now, all these things happen unto them for in samples, like our example. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. And then it tells you how to avoid temptation or what to do about it. Verse 13. Every Christian should memorize this verse. If you have never memorized this verse, get it. Make yourself learn it. Teach it to the kids. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. I want to preach this evening on how to overcome temptation. Sadly, Many Christians get stuck in the wilderness like these people did in the Old Testament and never do get where they could be and should be for God in their Christian life. 
Sin will always take you further than you want to go. Sin will always keep you longer than you want to stay. And sin will always cost you way more than you want to pay. You see others making mistakes and somehow or another, we are not smart enough uh, not to walk down the same road that we see others dropping off. If I see a thousand people in front of me dropping off a cliff, if I got any sense, I'm gonna say, I'm getting out of this line. I ain't going that way. Everybody's dropping off the cliff. And that's what it is. Those that happen for example, after example, after example, that me and you wouldn't make those same things. Now we're gonna reach back into the past of the children of Israel tonight and look just for a few minutes as they were under the cloud and under the, under the sea and went through the, in the wilderness and their pastor Moses led them through the wilderness. And, but many of them, as it said, God was not well pleased. Now let's look and see where they made their mistake. Look at verse six, to do a little as Bible study way tonight. Look at verse six, it said, we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Their big mistake was they lusted after evil things. The Bible's plain, simple, and to the point. That's not hard to understand. Uh, that word lust means a craving, like a craving or a strong desire for something. We do almost anything to get uh, what you want. Now, the, the lust is an evil thing. Lust is not always uh, something physical or sensual or sexual, anything like that. It can be a lust for power. It can be a lust for money. It can be a lust for position. It can be, excuse me, a lust for popularity, fame, uh, all kinds of things. People, did you know people lust after power? Did you know that's what uh, uh, men, especially politicians and the rulers of this world, uh, you say, why do they do that? They like power. People like to feel like I've got power. I can do this. I've got power over here. Many times when uh, men are, are uh, abusers, abusers of women or children, you know what their problem is? They want to feel powerful. They want to feel like I'm in control. I, know I can boss these people around. I'm the, I'm the big guy. I'm the tough guy. I'm the, I'm the king. That's why they are. I'm the king. Everybody bow down to me. That's a lust for power, a lust for money. They believe that money will do anything. And people who believe money will do anything will do anything for money. You can mark it down. Ladies and gentlemen, they, he said, don't lust after evil things as they also lusted. Uh, they left Egypt. They got stuck in the wilderness, but they got bored and tired of God's supernatural provisions, and they begin to lust. They, uh, in other words, here, let me put it so you can understand it. They got saved. They went to church. They gave up all their sins. They changed their friends. They changed their music habits. They changed their lifestyle. Done real good for a while. And one day they was going down the road and heard one of their old favorite songs from way back. And they thought, oh, I just missed that song so much. And I just missed it. That's what they done. They were out here and God let them out of Egypt and God brought all them out of there by a mighty hand. A million five hundred thousand of them small estimate, and they come out of there, and they got out here and delivered out of Egypt's bondage. They had to work back there. They had to make bricks. They had to work like a dog. They were slaves in Egypt. They had no rights. They couldn't do nothing. They were totally under Pharaoh, but they ate them leeks and them onions and them garlics and stuff back there. Then they got out here in the wilderness. God blessed them, let manna fall out of heaven every day, leading them to the promised land. And I'll be if they didn't say, man, I sort of missed them leeks. I sort of missed them Gar at garlic. I, 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 I want to go back and watch a movie over there in Egypt. I want to see what Egypt is coming out with. I want to see they lusted after evil things. Now you listen to me tonight. You hear me and hear me well. You're getting in trouble when you start looking back into this world and saying, you know what, man, I, I sure wish I could uh, uh, go to a club and uh, I just like to hang out with some of my old friends and hear the old music again and honky tonk just to little bit and all of that. You get in trouble when you start lusting after evil thing. Many of them died in the wilderness. They never did make it into the promised land. And you as a Christian, 
are getting in big trouble when you start wanting to listen to the world's music, wanting to go to the world's entertainment places, wanting to watch the world's movie. I know we're surrounded in it. I know it's everywhere we look, but brother, they lusted after evil things and it got them in trouble. I'd rather be free and have manna falling from heaven and walk in the wilderness than living back in Egypt eating garlic and onions and Pharaoh be my master, amen? I tell you what, brother, I'd rather, I'd rather be saved and on my way to heaven and come in here and sit and read my Bible and sing some good, clean songs than to be out there with your old boyfriend or your old girlfriend getting high and getting drunk and living like the devil and shacking up and getting in trouble with the cops and getting arrested and having your license revoked and getting DUIs and everything else. Ladies and gentlemen, they lusted after evil things. They started wanting to watch the uh, country music awards like some of y'all did uh, the other night. They wanted to watch Lifetime movie. Uh, uh, them old Lifetime movie. That's Christian porn uh, for on Lifetime music. Uh, for old, you know, that's not as bad as that old wicked, ungodly stuff. It's just, uh, you know, it just insinuates uh, Christian wickedness. Chris, rock videos, rap videos, country music videos where it's flesh, 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 and dancing and flesh and dancing and music and flesh. They lusted after evil things. You're getting in trouble when you get like that. Amen? And you know what it said? It said uh, they got in trouble and many of them died in the wilderness. Look at number, number seven. They were, neither be ye idolaters. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. What's an idol? An idol, I-D-O-L, is anything you put uh, worship in, instead of God. They melted their gold, put it together, and out came this golden cat, and they bowed down and worshiped it. They paid a lot of money for their idols. As a matter of fact, you can tell when somebody has an idol, they'll pay a lot of money. That's why people, some of them boys told me, some of them pills they take, they pay $70 and $80 for one pill to put in their mouth. I'm telling you, brother, I'd have to be a hurting like crazy uh, to pay $75 for a pill. I, I, I'm, I refuse to let myself get on a bunch of junk like that. By the grace of God, I'm not gonna do it. They, they'll, pay, they'll pay any amount of money. You know what? I'm not trying to be ugly or mean tonight, but they say that a smoker, just somebody that smokes regular, on a regular basis, uh, uh, spends uh, like $250, $200 a month on cigarettes. Heavy smokers spend three and four, enough to pay for a very, very nice car. Just on cigarettes. I've heard people saying, uh, well, I've got this habit or this habit, or uh, you know, alcohol and beer. There's no telling what they spend on alcohol and beer uh, or, or pot, uh, for that matter. Uh, there's no telling the amount of money. People pay a lot of money. People pay a lot of money. I, I heard some ball game where they're charging 15, 20, $25,000 for a seat. I'm telling you, brother, I ain't, listen, I, I ain't the smartest person in the world, but I would be ashamed to tell somebody I paid $25,000 sitting watch a ball game. Lord, have mercy. You talk about ignorant. You talk about idol worship. I mean, you, I, seen, I ain't seen a, a college game just on the news or something, but Lord, they come on there. That's why I don't like I, Duke and Carolina. Everybody goes crazy over them and all of that. I, listen, them guys, them, that camera comes around there. That guy, uh, one guy's got a big D on his belly. Next guy's got a big U on his belly. Next guy's got a big K on his belly. And you sort of, I don't know if that's a D or a P. And, uh, and uh, they're all there and there. The, and the camera's turning around there. And they go, ah, what I want, what I want, what I want. Like, uh, and everybody thinks, oh my goodness, the, in the Cameron Stadium, wouldn't it be wonderful to be there? I tell you what that is, that's idol worship. Amen. That's how it works. That same crowd has never one time shouted in church, won't raise their hand, won't say amen, sit there and sleep and play on their phone. I'm telling you tonight, that's idolatry. If you want to worship somebody, worship God. Amen. 
That's why I'd rather play, get, play ball than watch it. I like to watch it, but Lord and mercy, I ain't gonna pay money for it. I mean, good night. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's idolatry. The cars, the boats, the idols. The Catholic Church tonight has idols, statues. You know, the Old Testament forbids worshiping a statue. They have the Virgin Mary and the, then her Guadalupe somewhere and blood comes out of her, her, her hand or something like that. It's a bunch of junk. If blood comes out of one of them statues, I can promise you one thing. The Holy Ghost ain't in a thousand miles of it. That's demonic. If it's happening, that's demonic. The blood of Jesus don't come out of a statue's hand in Mexico in 2018. Amen? And if it's Mary's blood, it ain't gonna do you no good, no way. That's idol worship. Lord, they said this, as some old, some old redneck preacher got to go in one of them big Catholic, uh, 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 whatever they are, be able to start to say church, uh, but they went to him one time and went in one of them planes and, and there was, there was, a, there was a man right there, a big statue, and there was one on both sides, and they, he, said, uh, he said, there's a statue of Jesus. By the way, that's why we don't have a crucifix in here. We don't have a statue of Jesus on the cross. We might see a cross that's a remembrance of what he done, but we don't have statues of Jesus. He's not on the cross. He's long gone from the cross and never will be again. But they, they said, now, now that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Who's that? They said, you don't know who that is. That's Pope Bonif Boniface III. And who's that over there? Oh, that's Pope John. Don't you know who that is? That's Pope John, that's Pope Boniface. And he said, well, I don't know. I always, I heard he's crucified between two thieves, but I never didn't know their names. <laughs> uh, but I'm telling you tonight, that's idolatry. That's idolatry. They claim they have the hair of the Virgin Mary. They claim they have a, 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 a shirt, or something that belonged to one of the apostles. One of the, one they, have over there, they, they, they find all this stuff and they had a head. They said it was John the Baptist. And it went over about 100 miles, some other monastery somewhere, and they had another head. It was a big one. That was a little one. They said, this is John the Baptist. He said, I thought you said that little one is him. He said, that was him when he was a boy. Uh, but anyway, uh, listen, that is idolatry. That is idolatry. Neither be ye idolaters. We don't worship statues. There is not a statue in this church. We don't honor relics. We don't twiddle beads. We don't have aids to worship. You can worship God out in a desert with not one dime and not one thing in your hand. You can come to the throne of God just as good as a Catholic priest can on a solid gold floor in a, in a mansion somewhere. Neither be ye idolaters. Amen? That's right. But let me say this. Verse number eight. It said this, neither let us commit fornication. As some of them committed and fell in one day, three and 20,000. If you know your Old Testament, if you read the Bible, there was a plague back there where uh, the fornication got in the camp to run rampant like it is in Morgan tonight. And brother, uh, 23, a plague broke out and 23,000 people died in that plague. Let me say to you tonight, folks, Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, men and women, uh, it is still wrong today. Sexual immorality. We have become numb and think it's normal for people to shack up. Young people today, very few girls are still virgins when they go to the marriage altar. Uh, uh, Miss Millie told me her, her daughter was still a virgin when she was married the other day. And uh, I was so honored to be able to do that wedding knowing that young lady had kept herself pure. And lady, that's a thing of the past. People think it's silly nowadays. There's a woman that used to come to church here. Uh, she said, it's unreasonable. It's ridiculous to think these kids are gonna stay virgin. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's still possible. It's still expected as a child of God. And if you've done messed up, it's expected of you to repent and to stay clean and virtuous until you get married. That's what fornication is. Any kind of sexual act 
activity outside of the marriage bond. Now, take just a second and clear up a rumor. Rumor going around by some crazy preachers that's trying to teach their no divorce doctrine uh, that fornication is only for single people. And they try to tell you because Jesus said, uh, uh, said to be fornication. He was talking about a pre uh, engagement period there before Mary and Joseph were actually married and that fornication is sexual activity between anybody who's unmarried and adultery is sexual activity between married people. Have you ever heard that taught or preached? Raise your hand. Most of you have. Well, uh, let me show you how, how ignorant of scripture and how ridiculous and how, I can clear that up in two seconds. Easily. 23,000 people died in that plague for fornication. You're not going to tell me that all of them were single people. You mean to tell me that none of them people died in that plague was married? Yes, they were. But they were committing immorality. Now, the difference between fornication and adultery is a thin line. Usually, fornication implies an act. Adultery can only be a thought. He that looketh and lusteth after a woman has committed adultery in his heart. That's why Jesus said, it be for fornication, he said for adultery, you could just divorce your husband for having a lustful thought. And you can't do that. I mean, Lord, if you could, now many of you would be married, are they? Look up here. I'll tell you when it's time to pray. So fornication has a physical slant. Adultery has a literal, uh, a spiritual slant, but not always. Adultery is an act, but a thought. Fornication is an act, more, but a thought. And I'm telling you this evening, ladies and gentlemen, it is a wicked thing. It is an ungodly thing. It is a, a, a wicked thing of sinful uh, homosexuality in Jude. Said going, giving themselves over to fornication. And going after strange flesh, men with men's fornication, women with women's fornication. You say, what if I get married? Still wrong. There's no way homosexuality can be right no matter what you do with it. At least if you're normal, you can get married and have the blessing of God on, on your physical uh, life. But it is wrong to commit fornication and 23,000 people died. Because of committed fornication. I believe tonight there's people all over our churches tonight suffering and living a miserable life because they will not commit, quit committing fornication. And if you're committing fornication here tonight, you ain't gonna, God's not gonna bless that, God's not gonna use until you repent and get right with God. One girl said, Well, well he, I said, Won't y'all get married? And she said, Well, he won't marry me. I said, Why should he? He gets all the privileges of being married and none of the responsibilities. You know that jerk ain't gonna marry you. Say amen, y'all. Help me now. I'm telling you, brother, he'll never, he'll never, never, ever marry you if, you, if you're shacking up anyway. Why should he? Lordy mercy, I'm helping y'all if you'll listen to me. Amen. That's right. Um, he said, uh, me and Brother Wayne was up in West Virginia and we went in a convenience store this old girl running that store, she come in, we talked to her for a second, we was buying us a drink or something, potato chips or something. And there's an old guy coming, you remember that, Brother Wayne? And she's sort of, let's uh, loose acting, let's say that. And, uh, and he came in and she said, hey! And he said, hey! And they got, I thought they was gonna kiss. I really did. They got that close together and she said, now you be careful. And he said, I love you. And she said, love you too. And, uh, and he left and uh, I started witnessing to her and I, to give her a track, something like that. And I said, I'm a preacher. And she said, my husband's a preacher. And I said, oh, really, was that him? She said, oh, no, that's just a good customer. <laughs> I said, what are you selling? <laughs> <laughs> your husband's a preacher, and that's the way you act with your customers? You say, well, we didn't do nothing. We just flirt around a little bit. You keep that up, and something's going to happen before you know it. Amen. 
Amen. A lot of this Christian flirting going around, everybody acting like, oh, I'm not doing anything wrong. You know deep down inside, you're full of the devil. And I, I, ladies and gentlemen, uh, old Zig Ziglar, you ever heard of him? He's this positive thinker, salesman guy. Uh, he ain't much of a preacher or teacher or nothing like that. But he, he's a success, teach you how to be a success. And he said, he said he will not go out to eat with his secretary. He said he wouldn't go out with the secretary from work, just him and her, like they do everywhere. Strictly business, they say. He said, for five reasons. Number one, he said, I ain't got nothing to say to my secretary that I can't say right here in the office. Sounds good, right? <laughs> Number two, he said, if I go her out to eat with her, I might like it. And that'd be wrong. Number three, I might want to do it again, and that'd be wrong. Number four, I really might enjoy talking to her and that would really be wrong. And number five, I'm married and I wouldn't want my wife out eating out with another man. And everybody said? Right, that's old fashioned, but it's still true. You can't, look, you can't get a bunch of people in their 30s and early 30s and 20s out here on a boat on, on the lake and everybody in bikinis and bathing suit, four or five couples out there and them. You can't do that, people. Well, sooner or later, somebody gonna mess with somebody else's wife. Mark it down. Amen. Or the hair back in the old days when they went to drive in. Y'all remember when you used to go to drive in? These kids nowadays don't even know what that is. How many of y'all went to drive in when you was growing up? We, we used to go when I was a teenager. We didn't watch the movie. We just go, just go to be cutting up, acting stupid. They had to drive in out there on the other side of Marion. They said one of them old drive ins years ago, they come out there like that and he said some guy come in there with a shotgun one night about halfway through the movie, grabbed a microphone out there and he said, all right, you sorry, good for nothing, blankety blank, blank, blank. Cussing. He said, I know you're out there, my wife, and I'm coming out there right now and blow your brains out. And 43 cars left out of the parking lot. <laughs> Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. But then let's, let's look at Verse number nine, quickly. Neither let us tempt Christ. How do you tempt Christ? Well, by questioning his direction and leadership in your life. His knowledge, his ability to keep you. Uh, God, why? How come this? I thought if I got saved, this would happen. I'm trying to live right. How come you don't send me a husband? I'm trying to do right. Why can't I find a job? Why can't I find a good woman? How come now I'm sick? I'm trying to live right. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them tempted. And we're tempted, brother, and uh, look what happened. And we're destroyed as serpents. You remember that story there in Numbers chapter 21? How that they tempted the Lord. God will bring you and take you to some places that you will wonder where in the world he's at, wonder in the world what in the world's going on. You'll wonder how in the world am I gonna make it and you've gotta make up your mind, I'm gonna trust God through the wilderness and serve God through my unbelief and do right. Number five, quickly, number five. It verse said in verse 10, neither murmur ye as some of them murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. That's the last one they did. Murmur, complain, and they were destroyed. People who died, they are murmurers and complainers walking after their own lust, according to Jude, verse 16. They griped, they had water coming out of the rock, they had manna falling out of the sky, and griped and griped and belly ached and cried and whined all the blessed time. Why don't this, and why don't you do that? And you're not meeting my needs and I want this and I don't like, I want a new this and I want a new that and I want new clothes and I want, I want this and I want that and I won't, 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 won't. They murmured and complained and the Bible said they were destroyed of the destroyer. If you don't get nothing else I've been preaching for the last two weeks, be thankful for what you've got. Thank God for what you've got. It ain't, great, ain't perfect. Nobody's life perfect. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Them people you see on TV, their life ain't perfect. The people you hear on, on the magazine, see them down there, their life ain't perfect. Thank God for what you've got. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your house. Thank God for your clothes, your health, your kids, your husband, your wife, and serve God. Don't complain all the time. Amen. 
You say, well, Brother Danny, we just get hit all the time here. I, I wouldn't go to a church so sorry the devil didn't fight it. Be content with what you have. To cuss is wicked. To take God's name in vain is wicked. To murmur is wicked. That's taking his vision, provisions in vain. Somebody said this, and I'll say this and I'm through. Half the trouble in life, listen, can be traced to saying yes too soon and no not soon enough. Realize you ain't no different than nobody else. You're not the first person to go through what you're going through and you ain't gonna be the last. Amen? That's right. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able but will with the temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. I'll say two things. God has already put enough grace on your record to help you make it all the way through this thing. He's put enough gas in your tank to get you home to be with him. When you got saved, he knew exactly how far it was from there to heaven, and he put enough gas in your tank to make it. He ain't going to desert you. He ain't going to leave you nor forsake you. If things ain't going good in your life, just pull your toboggan down, go straight, and just keep right on walking. Work that bus route. Teach that class. Raise that child. Sing in the choir. Be a witness at work. Read your Bible. Just keep right on going straight. Don't be pulled this way or that way. That's what happened to these people. And they perished in the wilderness. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Now tonight, while our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I've talked to you about how to overcome temptation. I don't know what your temptation is tonight. I have no idea. Uh, Brother, Brother Mike mentioned in Sunday school this morning, everybody's got something that bothers you, maybe more than one something. I don't know. But I know one thing, your flesh and 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 you're, you're in the flesh you're going to be tempted. You need to learn turn over the Lord. Don't don't act like you're the only one that ever happened to. If you want to come and pray, we're going to have a word of prayer together and we're going to be we'll be done for tonight. So just join me here on this altar. Make your way down here and let's let's come and pray and let's get around the altar here and we'll pray for a minute before we go tonight. Our heavenly Father, we want to thank you for all that you've done for us. We pray now that you would bless every single person here this evening. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for what you've done in our church. Thank you for what you've done in, in these days of camp meeting and revival and all the stuff, Lord, that, uh, how you've blessed us lately. And Lord, during this Thanksgiving week, help us to have a Thanksgiving spirit on us all week long. Bless everybody as we meet back Wednesday night and then Thursday with the family. And Lord, help us to be back Saturday to go visiting and be a blessing and get the work done you've given us to do. And we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. So I'm still, so I'm still praying tonight. I'm just...